Welcome everybody to TechCraft, this is Rob. In today's video, I want to talk about one of my favorite types of software, the Tiling Window Manager. Let's go. So, a Tiling Window Manager will automatically lay out the windows in your operating system based on some kind of algorithm, rather than you positioning them by hand with the mouse. If you're a Linux user, you might be familiar with the idea of a Tiling Window Manager. There's a ton of options there. Awesome, i3, DWM, Xmonad, which is the window manager I use on Linux. And that's one of my favorite pieces of software. It kind of gives me everything I want for that particular use case. And I've been trying to get as close to that as I can on the Mac, which is why this video exists. On the Mac, there are a fair few options for Tiling Window Manager. There's Divi, there's Magnet, there's Yabai, and then there's the one we'll talk about today, Amethyst, and there's probably more. Um, in absolute terms, Yabai is definitely the most powerful window manager, but to get most of that power, you need to disable SIP, uh, System Integrity Protection, on your Mac. And for me, that's a no-go because I'm not able to do that on my work laptop because of security policy. For Amethyst, I can get all the features I want without having to mess around with the security settings of my OS. In fact, out of the box, the Amethyst setup is nearly exactly what I want for the basics of window management. It's never gonna be quite what I can get from Xmonad, but it gives me what I need to, to work on Mac. If you've never used a Tiling Window Manager before, it's definitely worth giving it a go. You might find it gels with you. If you're a keyboard heavy user, then Amethyst is a great choice. If you're a mouse user, you might actually prefer Magnet, but the same principles will apply. So I think this video will help in both cases. Before we dive into the details of Amethyst, it is actually worth reviewing some of the basics of Mac window management because they do kind of play together. I've put timestamps for all the sections in the description below. So if you already know this, feel free to skip ahead. Let's dive straight in. So here I am on my Mac and I've got one desktop open with two windows and obviously you can put as many windows as you want on your desktop. And one feature of Mac is this notion of spaces, what other operating systems just call workspaces, don't know why it's not called workspaces. And if we press control and up on the keyboard, then we can bring up this kind of spaces bar where I can see all the spaces that I've got and I can create new spaces. You can also use swipe up on a touchpad to get the same effect. And I'm gonna add a new space with the plus here, and I'm gonna switch to that space. So now I've got a brand new desktop. These are completely isolated. If I can press now control and left arrow, I'll go back to the space I was on and control right arrow takes me to space two. If you have a lot of spaces, moving between them with the control on the left and right arrows gets quite annoying. You can use numbered shortcuts to move between spaces. Let me show you how. So first of all, I've now got three spaces here, one, two, and three. And what I want to do is be able to get to them by control one, two, and three. And I'll show you how to do that. So if I open up system preferences and I come to keyboard here and then shortcuts and then uh, mission control, now I've got these options to shift to desktop one, two, and three. And if I just select them, the default shortcut is control one, two, and three. That's what the carrot up pointing arrow means is control. And now I can go to space one with control one, space two, and space three. Fantastic. One nice thing with spaces is you can control which spaces apps are bound to. So you can say, for example, always open up notes on space two. And let me show you how to do that. So I switch to space two, and I'll show you up here, we're on desktop two. And now I'm going to bring up my notes app. And that's fantastic, that's here. And what I'm gonna do is right click, go to options. So right click on the dock icon and go to options and just say assign to this desktop. Fine. Nothing happens right now. If I close notes, and I'm gonna control one, switch back to desktop one, and then I'm gonna open notes again, and we'll see what happens. So that switched me to space two, which we can see if we look up here, we're on space two again, and it's bound the notes app to that space. The inverse of that is that you might want an app to appear on all spaces, and I'll show you how that works. I like to do this with system preferences, because often you're working your way, you wanna change a preference or a setup, and you don't wanna to switch to another space. I'll show you how that works. So from here, the first thing we'll do is we'll open up system preferences. It's open now which means it's in the dock. Come down to the dock, right click, options, all desktops. And now as I cycle through the desktops, 
system preferences is available in all of them. So that's really all there is for the basics of spaces. Certainly everything you'll need to know to be able to work well with the tiling window manager. Let's now get into how we install and set up Amethyst. So one option for installing Amethyst is to go to the website and I'll put the link in the description below and just download the package. But also on their website, they do recommend using Homebrew. And if you haven't got Homebrew, please do check out my, uh, my video on that. I'm just gonna do brew install Amethyst and we'll get that installed. Great, Amethyst is installed, and now we just need to launch it. Because this is an app you download from the internet, you need to say you're fine to run it, that's okay. And the first thing you'll need to do is enable accessibility features so that Amethyst can do all the things it needs to do with window moving. And to do that, we'll click on Open System Preferences. We'll click on the lock icon here, type in password, and then allow Amethyst access to the accessibility features. Great. And what we need to do is actually quit and then relaunch Amethyst. And immediately my windows have tiled. This is brilliant. Um, so I'm gonna choose to check automatically for updates. So immediately what happened there is that my windows have gone into two columns. And that's sort of the default behavior of a tiling window manager is that the layout is automatically driven by the algorithm, whichever algorithm you've got selected uh, at the time. So before we get into the precise details of the layouts and so forth, let me just show you how to move between windows and how to resize them. These are kind of the basic operations you'll do when you're using a tiling window manager. So we've only got two windows open at the moment. Let's create a third and I'll give it a, a different layout. And now we can sort of see the difference between the windows. And notice that two windows have opened up on the, the, the right here and they're smaller and the one on the left is, is bigger. The one on the left is what's called the main window and often the main window is used to drive things like where the sizing operations happen. If you've got a, a layout with three or more windows in, the layout, win the, the main window is often the bigger one and we'll see more of that later on. For now though, I want to show you how we're gonna move between these windows. So I'm here in the uh, left main window and I want to move to so the other window. So I can hold down Alt Shift and then with J, I can cycle counterclockwise, and with K, I can move clockwise. So those are the very basics about moving between windows. If I want to make the windows bigger and smaller, I can do that. So if I hold down again, Alt and Shift, and with L, I'm able to make the main window bigger, and with H, I'm able to make the main window smaller, and all the other windows are resizing at the same time. When you're first getting started with Amethyst, it can be quite nice to still be able to use the mouse to do resizing, and that's not able by default. But if you come to the Amethyst operations in the, in the bar at the top here, go to preferences, go to mouse, and choose resize windows using mouse. Now what I can do is drag on the main window here, and don't worry that it's overlapping, because the moment you let go, all of the windows snap into the right place. That's quite a nice option. I, I still find myself leaving that enabled because sometimes you just want to get a very precise layout. So speaking of layouts, let's actually see more layouts in action. Um, and you can cycle between the different layouts by using Alt, Shift, and Space. So now I've shifted the two smaller windows to the bottom of the screen, and now I've gone into full screen, and when in full screen mode, the main window, it just takes up the whole screen. This can be quite useful for kind of zooming on on a piece of work. And if I do Alt, Shift, Space again, I've come to this three column layout, which you know, depending on the width of your screen is more or less useful. It's not very useful on a laptop screen, but on a very wide screen, I have a, a 5K, 2K screen that I work on during the day. It's very useful to have this, this layout. Um, and then back to the tall layout where you've got two panes on the right. One very useful feature enabled out of the box is you can just full screen the window you're focused on. So if I come to uh, the blue window down here and if I press Alt, Shift and D, then that window pops into full screen. So if you're in a window and you want to focus on it immediately, just Alt, Shift and D gives you full screen. Sometimes you don't want to go completely full screen on the window you're focusing on, rather you want to make that window the main window. That's also possible. So if we highlight the blue window here and if we press Alt, Shift and hit Enter, then that becomes the main window and you can then make any, you can make any window you want to be the main window. So a tiling window manager isn't just about moving between the windows or laying out the windows, it's often about moving the windows as well. And I'll show you what I mean with an example. So I want to move this white terminal window 
down to where the Safari window is and likewise move the Safari window up to the, where the white window is. And I can do that by holding Control Shift Alt and then pressing K to shift that clockwise. So that shifted the, the white window clockwise. And I can do the same thing again. I can do the same thing again, shifting it and this time making it the main window and going back to where I was originally. And notice now the Safari window is the main window. If I want to reset, I can just come to the blue window Alt Shift Enter makes that the main window and we're kind of back to where we started. And if I want to cycle in reverse, I can do, that is uh, Control Alt Shift and J to go counterclockwise. You can really get the window layout exactly as you want, but we've only seen the default built-in layouts. There are many more layouts and let me show you how to enable them. So open the bar at the top here, we'll come to the Amethyst logo and we'll press Preferences and then we'll go to Layouts. And these are the default four layouts, but you can add more by coming to the plus icon here. And I'm gonna choose three column middle, which is one of my favorite layouts that I use, especially on a wide screen. So let's enable that and close. And then let's just start cycling through. It doesn't work. And you may have noticed on the window, there's a little bit, bit of text saying you need to restart every time you add a new layout, which is easy. Come up to here on the bar again, the Amethyst logo and choose relaunch. Notice how that's kind of popped me back to what the default for this window was in the initial state. And now I can switch to the main, uh, the three column middle layout. Let me do that with Alt Shift Space. And there we go. I've got my three column middle. And again, I can resize the window in the middle with Alt Shift H and L like that. And this can be really nice on a widescreen monitor. If you have a layout like this that you really like to use all the time, rather than having to toggle to it, you can assign a shortcut to that layout. Let me show you how. So come to the Amethyst again, come to Preferences, and now in Shortcuts, scroll all the way down, and you can see all the, all the shortcuts I've been showing you are all listed here, and you can tweak them and you can see them, and you can see your layout, uh, three column middle, and what I want to do is just assign that to be Alt, Shift, and three, and now I've got that layout enabled by default. So if I come here, and maybe we just make, uh, let's just tap, Get that one now, and I want to go back to three column middle, Alt Shift three, gives me three column middle immediately. So now we can size windows, we can move between windows, we can move the windows themselves, and we can create layouts and, and toggle those layouts. There's not a lot more you need to know about Amethyst to be proficient, that's pretty much the basics. What I would like to show you is how to deal with window floating. This is really useful to be able to deal with windows that just don't want to play well with the, the tiling manager and also how to deal with moving windows between spaces and screens. Let's see that. So I've just reset my layout to something a bit simpler. And the first thing I want to show you is how to, how to float a window. So I'm on the Safari window. And if I press Alt Shift and T for toggle, this kind of toggles on and off on a window by window basis, the ability to be part of the tiling uh, layout and you can see now I can just drag my Safari window freely and that's fantastic and notice how the terminal window has now filled up the full screen as far as the layout algorithm is concerned there is only one window to be tiled and I can untoggle that by alt shift and t to toggle back to in the tile and this is really nice if you just want for a particular time to focus exactly where you want it on a particular window things like slack zoom often when you're trying to position the window uh, for the video you can you can use the float to get that just right if we come up to the preferences of Amethyst and come to the floating tab, you'll see that float small windows is enabled and you probably don't want to disable that. It means things like the, the save dialogue and the print dialogue will generally, even this dialogue, like the actual dialogue of, of Amethyst itself will always float. Um, what small means, I've never managed to determine. And it seems to me there's a move between different machines that small seems to change. And I'll, I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to open up System Preferences and you can see it's floating here. On my MacBook, it doesn't float by default. I have to make it float. Um, and I'll show you how to do that, how to always pin an app to float. So come to Amethyst Preferences again, come to Floating, and down here, you can specify which applications you want to float. And there is an option to float all applications except the ones that you have listed. This can be quite nice if you really only want to use the tiling window manager for say, a code editor and a terminal window side by side, but everything else you want to be free. Your preference, I like to tile everything by default and opt out for floating. So I'm just gonna to add to my opt out, select from applications. 
come down to system preferences here and hit select. And I want to float it always on all windows. And now, regardless of what size screen I've got connected to this machine, whether this is classed as a big or a small window, system preferences will always float. You can enable and disable kind of global float um, if you just kind of get a bit fed up of the tiling for a second or if you're just getting used to it and you want to take a, a bit of a time out, you'll have to shut down Amethyst. If you do Control Shift Alt and T, that disables the, the tiling and you can see the Amethyst logo has gone gray to sort of say I'm not, I'm not tiling anymore. And I can now just start to drag windows about freely and they're part of, they're no longer part of the tiling algorithm. Control Shift Alt and T again, enables the tiling and everything snaps back into place, except the system preferences window, which I've said to always float. So we're nearly there, this is nearly everything. Let me show you one more feature that I find particularly useful, which is how to move your applications and your windows between spaces. So just to recap, I've got three spaces open here. The first one has got all these windows on it and the second two are empty, but they will have system preferences on there because earlier on we bound that to be on every space. So if I go back to space one, I want to move this window, the Safari window, to space two. Okay, to do that, Control Shift Alt and right arrow. That should be enough, but there seems to be a bug at the moment where you have to do it again. Don't know why, but there we go. We're now on space two, I'll show you. We're on space two and Amethyst is there. Sorry, the Safari window is there on this space. If I want to move it back, Control Shift Alt, left arrow, and because there were no windows on that space other than Safari, it seems to move the first time. But when there are other windows, it seems you have to press the shortcut a second time. It's a minor inconvenience at the moment. But now I have a way to move all my windows around on the same layout. I have a way to move all my windows around between spaces. The thing that's missing is me able to move them to different screens. And although I can't show you because I've only got one screen and it's hard to record multiple screens, I'll just show you in the preferences that there is a shortcut for that as well. So if I come to shortcuts here, and I'm just gonna scroll down quickly, and what you'll see is all the shortcuts for moving between spaces, and notice as well, there is actually a shortcut to move between spaces by number, so you don't have to just use the arrows. But also, there is a way to move your focus between your screens, and also move a window to a particular screen. Um, if you've got multiple screens, I actually only use one screen, but if you've got multiple screens, this is probably be quite handy. So that's not everything you can do with Amethyst, but it's pretty much, I would say, 90% of the feature set. And certainly it's the feature set that I find myself using all the time. There are features I may occasionally use, like once a month or something, you can have multiple main panels and things like that. But I find that that gets quite finicky, so I'm trying to stay to a smaller feature set that works intuitively for me at least. You can find all those features out by looking at that list of keyboard shortcuts in the preferences. So tiling window managers are probably not for everybody, but I find the, the uniform layout helps me work better. I find the lack of clutter helps me work better. Certainly a keyboard driven tiling window manager might not be for you. There is also, as I mentioned, magnet, which is a similar kind of thing, but very mouse driven. So if you prefer the mouse, you know, you give that a try. But I do urge everybody to try a tiling window manager for a little while. And because it's so easy to toggle on and off in Amethyst with the Control Shift Alt and T toggle, you can just try it out for an hour a day, and if you enjoy it, you'll kind of maybe build up on using it more and more, and you'll find yourself using it all the time like I do. Hope you found this video useful, I hope you found it interesting. I certainly like working with Amethyst, and I hope you will too. Uh, if you did find it useful, please hit like, please hit subscribe, and uh, hit the bell as well so you don't miss out on any more content. I'm always publishing tutorials like this, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.